Hello everyone and welcome to our workshop today on strategies for teaching students to learn. I am glad you're here. Today I'll talk about strategies that music teachers can teach their students, enabling them to learn more effectively in the same time spent studying and practicing. These strategies apply to all teachers with students at the middle school, high school, and college levels. And by the way, it applies to many different subjects, not just music. In a study done by Dr. Jeffrey Karpicki in May 2013, college students were asked to prepare for a test on the same topic using their choice of study methods. Each student was given the same amount of time to study. Students were told to select the method they thought would give them the best results on the test. For most students, their own predictions turned out to give them lower test scores than those students who selected the more effective study methods. It's clear in this case the stu uh, students were not the best predictors of their own learning effectiveness and that students need help from an instructor as to which study methods are the most effective. My hope at the end of this short session together is that you would be able to explain three important strategies students need to learn in a time-efficient manner and apply these strategies to music training. It is important that we as educators teach students efficient ways to retain and recall knowledge long term. Studies have shown that many or most students, whether they be grade school, college, or beyond, do not know or utilize the most effective and efficient strategies and habits for learning. For instance, students tend to prefer learning methods such as rereading or reviewing new material or using a single marathon learning session, also known as cramming, to prepare themselves for a test or a music event. Studies have raised questions, though, as to whether reviewing study material and cramming are time effective and whether these methods really lead to lasting learning. We all know that student study time and attention spans are limited, so in an ideal world we should consider using the most efficient strategies that give us the best outcomes. Since we are talking about learning efficiently and for the long term, what is learning? For today's purpose, I define learning as the process of picking up new knowledge or skills and then being able to rapidly and readily recall, retrieve, and apply that knowledge or those skills when needed later on. Many of us think of learning as the process of picking up new knowledge and sometimes we overlook that knowledge has to be almost instantly recalled or retrieved from memory at a later time in order to be useful. We refer to this pool of easily recalled information as the student's working memory. Let's talk about some ineffective study methods. Many students incorrectly believe that rereading or reviewing new material and cramming are the best ways to study. Studies have shown that rereading information for purposes of remembering it and cramming may have good short-term results. In other words, the student may do better on tomorrow's test but there are better ways to study where the same amount of time is used with better test scores and longer remembrance of information without having to spend the night before cramming. The first strategy to prepare the student to readily recall and apply knowledge gained is a cornerstone strategy for long-term learning and is known in educator terms as space retrieval practice. Let's explain some of the terms here. By retrieval, we mean self-quizzing. There are several ways to self-quiz, such as thinking back on the material you read and asking yourselves questions about it. To get right into an example of a retrieval that everyone is familiar with, consider the use of flashcards. The idea here is that the student themselves would make flashcards as they go through their course content and then begin using the flashcards to retrieve information from their memory. However, Flashcards by themselves can become a mindless retrieval process and eventually becomes an effort at putting information into short-term memory. No pun intended, but this use of flashcards falls short of our goal. Let's now go to the idea of using the flashcards in a spaced retrieval fashion. What do we mean by spaced? There is a process a student should devise to make the most of their time with the flashcards. 
For instance, immediately after reading material and making the flashcards, the students should go through them several times. The cards are then put away until the next day, where they are reviewed several more times in one session, then put away for longer and longer periods of time between review. The student may remove from the pile cards they already know and reintroduce them at a later date to assure themselves they still remember. To round out this short topic, one of the best study habits anyone can instill in themselves is the discipline of regular self-quizzing. Other forms of self-quizzing or retrieval not mentioned earlier are elaboration, which is the process of explaining something in your own words that you learned recently and then connecting with things you already know, and reflection, where we think back on what we did, how did it go, and how might we do it differently next time. When we combine these retrieval methods and space them out over time, we have a powerful combination that enables us to readily recall and apply information. Now let's apply this to the world of music. As music instructors, you already know that practicing something over and again is critical, especially the fundamentals like scales and chords. And if you remember, they are very boring and laborious for a younger student, even for an older college student. So it is important that you help the student establish a practice schedule or routine for all new skills and show them that practicing the same scale or chord each day for too long is actually counterproductive to advancing and will actually hold them back, not to mention they'll have less time to enjoy other things in life. Instead, encourage them to practice a new scale or chord for only a few minutes at a time in predetermined spaced intervals and do not practice it again until the predetermined time for the next practice. This is where you as an instructor come in is to help them, them to understand how often they should practice something and how long they should practice it. Encourage them to quickly memorize the scale within a couple of practices even if it slows down the speed of their playing at first. They should be encouraged to do this without the writ written scale in front of them. Another key to effective learning is the idea of interleaving. Interleaving occurs when we study multiple topics at the same time rather than only one topic at a time. Another way of saying this is to study multiple problem types at one time. We then begin to retrieve from memory information about multiple topics. Now, once again, let's return to our music studies and apply this topic of interleaving. What are you going to tell the student? Students should be encouraged to practice multiple skills in one practice session. For instance, not only should the, should the earlier mentioned scales and chords be practiced for a few minutes, but many other skills need to be practiced as well in the same study session. Examples of other things to practice are an existing piece of music that one knows well, a piece of music one is working on, and a piece of music one has never seen before. In fact, a good portion of a practice session should be spent on music never seen before. As one practices multiple topics at once, the student is going to see relationships among the topics that will enhance the student's ability to remember individual skills and also motivate the student as they see how basic mundane skills fit into more interesting advanced skills. Studies have also shown that the process of varying the way skills are practiced causes the brain to store information in a higher order place, therein enabling your brain to respond to variable situations you may encounter, perhaps situations you have never practiced before. Since we live in Ohio, I'll give you an elementary example you can all relate to. The varied practice strategy is a form of practice where the learner practices problems or skills that are similar but not exactly like the test or the actual situation they may encounter. The authors use the example of the bean bag toss, similar to the cornhole game in Ohio, where one group of students practice the two and four foot throws, which is a form of varied practice, while the other group practiced only three foot throws. When both groups were tested on the three foot throws only, the former group, who practiced the two and four foot throws only, succeeded over the group practicing three foot throws only. 
The final principle we want the music student to know is the idea of varied practice. Teach the student that all skills should be practiced in a variety of ways during each session. Let's apply this in a rather simple way using scales and chords again. Play scales and chords in a different order each day. Play them from bottom up, then top down the next day. Play a scale up and down, count up three notes, and play that scale up and down. Count up three notes again, and play that scale up and down. Play a scale by starting on its second note, and then starting on the third note, and so on. As instructors, you know what I'm saying. You know the student is now learning something magical. They are playing scales and chords in a similar way that songs are written, and therefore improving their instant recall for application later on. In summary, there are three important learning strategies students need to propel and sustain their music journey. These strategies are spaced retrieval, interleaving, and varied practice. Although there are other strategies as well, these strategies represent a trifecta. These are the lucky sevens, enabling your students to learn skills for the long term. Here are the references I used for today's talk. Thank you for listening.